or two meetings have taken place, and likely at the level of heads of intelligence. There's also interventions of two capitals, one in the Levant, another in Europe, which very likely are leading to the preparation of another meeting in a few weeks. Now, the question is, what's happening between Saudi Arabia and Iran? This question is very important because the confrontation between these two countries has been arguably the most consequential in the geopolitics of the Middle East and the Gulf over the past decade. Now, some people are saying that this is the beginning of an agreement between the two countries, the beginning of a rapprochement between Saudi Arabia and Iran. I doubt it. I do not think so. Because the ruling regimes in the two countries have diametrically opposed objectives and interests. However, there are certainly changes that are coming in the nature of the relationship simply because there are compelling factors on each side that are changing the calculus of both Saudi Arabia and Iran in the short run. Five factors affect the Saudi calculus. The first is Yemen. Ten years after the 2011 uprising in Yemen, Saudi Arabia has not managed to achieve the objectives it wants in the country. On the contrary, actually, its main opponent, the sectarian social group Iran-backed al-Houthis, have or has significantly enhanced its capabilities such that it is now able to threaten serious and key economic assets in Saudi Arabia. Two, or the second factor, is that the US Biden administration has taken a strong position against the war in Yemen. Now, this strong position is not merely uh, rhetorically, not merely rhetorically, but also by stopping American support, whether in intelligence or key supplies, to Saudi Arabia. This lessens Saudi capabilities in Yemen. This reduces Saudi capabilities in Yemen, which will make the Houthis more assertive. The third factor in the Saudi calculus is that there are influential circles in Washington, D.C., in the American capital, that have been using the acute humanitarian crisis that the war in Yemen has resulted in to weaken Saudi positioning in the US, particularly in Congress and the media. Of course, this comes after the Khashoggi affair, the murder of the Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in Istanbul. The result is that brand Saudi has been suffering for some time in America. Timing is important here because the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman realizes that Saudi Arabia's and his own positioning in the US will be important when the moment of his ascension to the throne after King Salman comes. At that moment, America's position on Saudi Arabia could very well have consequences. The fourth factor in the Saudi calculus is the US-Iran deal. Saudi Arabia realizes that a deal between these two countries will take time, but it will ultimately take place. And as the famous English saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. Basically, Saudi Arabia wants to be in the discussions leading to a new deal between the US and Iran. The fifth factor in the Saudi calculus is that there is a new mediator 
now who has proven himself to be particularly talented in all the negotiations related to Iran. This is Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa Al-Qadhimi, who has had a subtle but strong relationship with Tehran for several years and who has also managed to gain the trust of Riyadh. Increasingly, he is able to find the angles through which Saudi Arabia and Iran see that the benefits of discussion outweigh those of confrontation. The Iranian calculus is different, but still there are factors that are changing the Iranian thinking. One, Iran has achieved major strategic gains over the past decade, often at the expense of Saudi Arabia. But Iran is tired militarily and economically. Saudi Arabia, however, has immense economic resources and in the world of oil, it is vastly more powerful than Iran. And as such, it can increase the economic pressures on Tehran. Economic exhaustion incentivizes Iran to sit down and talk with Saudi Arabia. Two, Iran has for decades seen in its relationship with Saudi Arabia a way into dealing with various important dossiers, including the Shia presence in the Eastern Mediterranean, the future of Bahrain, where Saudi Arabia has notable influence and where the population of Bahrain is majority Shia, and of course in the global Sunni-Shia dialogue. So all of these factors together, or dossiers, have always been, from the Iranian point of view, dossiers that Iran sees its relationship with Saudi Arabia as a way to deal with them, at least to have a conversation about them. The third factor in the Iranian calculus is that, as always in Iran's foreign policy, it seeks to hold negotiations even with its harsh opponents, and even when tensions are very high. This is why Iran has continued to seek dialogue even after Saudi Arabia cut all links between the two countries in the wake of the burning of its embassy in Tehran three years ago. The result of all of these factors together is that we do not have a rapprochement, but a truce. So, despite all the factors highlighted here, the two sides' opposing objectives, interests, and worldviews will likely keep them not only apart, but also the champions of utterly different futures of the Middle East and the Gulf. However, these new factors in the calculus of the two countries will also likely lower the intensity of the confrontation between them. This will be highly welcomed in places such as Yemen, but it will also, or it could well, be the beginning of some crisis-averting steps in other countries, most notably Lebanon.